29. Hello, I'm Feedback Gaming. You're about to be knocked out, captured, and imprisoned inside a very small ball. And from there, you'll be forced to do chores, like liking, subscribing to my channel. But how do we get there? Unlimited XP in Power World. And how are you going to do that? Well, if you've got unlimited XP, you can get to level 15 immediately, which gives you a flyable mount, which I'll show you where to find, potentially kickstarting you up to level 30. And you're left with all the juicy later game content. Early flyable mount, unlimited XP. Let's do that in the most unusual way possible. Power World, new world. You, fellow subscriber, I love you so much. You will be named after this great world. Thank you for doing your part. Maybe you're like me, you're alone and you have no friends. Damn, that hurt. Hey, because I've got you. Take my hand, multiplayer's on, and why not play with a friend? Yes. It's not just about aesthetics, right? You have to make sure you create the perfect character that you can connect with, that you can feel like you are a part of the game experience. Oh my goodness. Someone didn't skip leg day. And it's kind of just as worse on the other end. Okay, something in the middle is definitely going to be fine. From head to toe, magnificent. Man looks and sounds exactly like me. This is a character I can connect to. A truly original world of Power World content that has never been seen before. 100% original. I love Pokemon. I mean Power World. So this waypoint is the first one you want to activate. Let's get here. And now we're in a position where we can actually create a base. So let's pick up a few stones. Talk to this beautiful gentleman or lady. I can't tell. And give him this 10 wood. Thank you. This exploit allows you to take advantage of gaining XP from building a base. The first thing we need to do to build a base and make it more convenient is capture our very first pal. So we need to look for a pal sphere. Level 35. What could go wrong? Must ignore intrusive thoughts. It's not going to happen. Another day. Ironically, by then this video, you will be able to take on that mammoth because you'll be a high enough level to do it. Insane, right? So on the map, if you press M, you can see where you start out. And this is the very first post waypoint we activated. Now, if you make your way down here, you'll be able to find some power spheres on the ground that you can collect and you can start building your base. So just get exploring. If you picked up enough items at this point, you would have already leveled up. So go into tab, hit enhanced stats, and you want way, way more carry weight. The most optimal amount to carry to optimize this XP exploit is about a thousand carry weight. So we're halfway there. I'm gonna love the gormless expression on the pals. Purely copyright free. Resembles nothing, right? What do we have here? Is this it? It is our very first pal sphere. Now, the first pal you want to capture is one of the cats. The cats are really good because they can do multiple roles in a base from transporting, picking up, mining stone. However, they're a little bit tricky to catch because they will run away when they see you. And here we are, the very first one. And he spots me immediately and he runs. I want to hold shift and chase. Cornered on a cliff. What are you going to do? Are you going to jump? I don't think so. And then if you hit me your very first hit, and then at that point, he will fight you. Don't underestimate him though. Very deadly. And he's stuck behind a tree. This game is working perfectly as planned. All right, get his health super low. Low as you can get it. And Q. And that should be 100% chance to capture. Congrats, you've got your first pal. Back to where we started. And this is a good place to build our base. So first of all, what we're going to do is drop the workbench. B, primitive workbench. Drop it down. We have our pal to help us out build it as well. And let's build. Now we need an axe. Very important that we get an X because we're going to be mining lots of lumber. And lumber, the more you have of it, the more XP you potentially gain before you get perpetual XP growth. Build! I'm looking at the little cat. Will help me out as well. Nice. So as I said to you before, max out that weight and start chopping. And as you can see here, every time I strike the tree, I'm getting more and more wood and fiber. We're not really going to use the fiber, but it'll find some use, trust me. Plus, the axe also doubles up as a weapon, so it makes it a little bit easy to capture some pals. Okay, we're near our weight capacity now. We're in a position to start using this wood to build our very first base. Hop into technology, and there's a few bits we need. First of all, wooden chest, pal box. A bow is also useful. Ammunition would be good for it as well. A wooden structure. Now this is crucially important. Ooh, you cheeky fiend. This is the beginning of unlimited XP for you. Some other items are quite useful too, just for unlocking and upgrading your pal box. A bed and also a bed for the pals. Without further ado, start the construction. You'll need a minimum of three pals to work the base efficiently. So you have the exploit that will work completely indefinitely. And the pal sphere needs to be unlocked to do that. What, you don't own a pickaxe? Why not use your fists? Projecting alpha male energy right now. Yo, bro, you, you want to help me out? No? Do you want to help me out? No? No? Okay. 
If you do want him to help you out, put him in the ball and throw him at the job you want him to do. And all of a sudden, he's helping out. Nice. Spheres. Take a few of them. You've been very patient, and thank you for that. So let's show you the very first part of this exploit. The less efficient method. To so open your build screen, go into foundations, and plant a wooden foundation. Now, what you want to do is just hold it up and level up just above eye height. And you need to make at least three rows. Press right mouse button to drop three rows. One, two, and a three. Perfect. Build. Now we need wooden walls. At the same time, we're going to place one here, here, and then here. Marvelous. Now we need a wooden roof on the right side. Just one of those. And then next up, we need some wooden stairs. That's just going to go right here. Getting the placement right It's a little bit difficult. You have to kind of stand underneath it. And then, boom. There we go. What is this unorthodox structure? The beginning of a house? Piece of modern art? No, no, no. This is an unlimited XP machine. Now you build and build another wooden wall. And what we need to do is place the wooden wall right here. See the right here, right there? Not there, no, it has to be kind of in the middle. And to place it in the middle, you kind of need to focus your mouse, kind of on the foundations at the bottom, and there it is. The beauty of this is you're about to place a structure that cannot be placed. And the result of that is the item will build and then instantly dismantle and then drop to the floor. But look here, can you see that? Oh, that's right. Every time I make an attempt to place this, I am rewarded with XP. As you can see, perpetual XP. Marvelous. You've run out of wood. And that is the drawback to this. You've got a limited amount of burst before you run out. And of course, I'm going to show you a method that is an unlimited amount of XP that will work indefinitely. But if you want to continue with this method, you can do. Collect all the wood again. Move all the way back. B, wooden wall. And then begin the right click. How quick can you right click? Level 13, 14, more, and 15. Pop. Okay, that's enough for now. So now you're wondering, this is cool and everything, but am I going to get to level 30 with this? This is going to be quite a slow method. That's true. So what we need to do is create a method with this, but it works indefinitely, but you don't even need to be at your PC. What we need to do for that is to capture three worker bees. Look at him working hard, earning his pay. Oh, no, he's off mining. He's doing his thing, okay. Now, we get three workers, specifically three pals that do this. If we get three pals that have transporting, we can continuously move that wood back and forth automatically and keep filling up our inventory for that wood. And we're going to do precisely that. You're going to go to the base, work hard at the base. And in the meantime, I'm off to find some more transporters. And at the very start of the game, the only transport you've got available to you is the cat. So we're going to look for some more cats. And here he is. Not you. Ah, you in the distance. Once again, they're really difficult to catch because they always run away. Come on, son. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, and then five. Got you. We need at least three of you. Oh, two more recruits. Would you like to join my little squad? One, and then two. Easy. But now convenient, on the way back at level one. It'd be rude to not to, right? Two, three, four, and you're mine. Just be careful when you hit Q, because if you throw a ball and you're not aiming directly at the pal, you won't capture it, and then you waste that sphere. And look at this pal, working hard collecting stone. What a lad. The beauty of resources in Power World is if you place them in a box like this, you don't need to pull them out of the box to build within the base boundaries. So you will gain resources and be able to place them an unlimited amount of times as long as you have the resources nearby and this is all part of the plan let's upgrade the base let's put up some of our pals to work at the same time why not build a shoddy bed you're about to see the worst structure humanly possible maybe someone out there will be thankful for this bed who knows but it has to have a roof on it and there it is a bed for me a bed for a pal and unfortunately there's no bed for you i'm so sorry and if you sleep it's daytime and back to work and also now we can upgrade our pal box and allowing us to have another worker bee as a part of the base to do some collecting and some gathering do you remember the key number that i said earlier hit tab enhanced stats we need about a thousand that's perfect look at all that inventory space that is massive the beauty of inventory space is it gets to carry more wood i can continue the xp glitch a little bit longer and plus every cat i've got in my inventory has this can you see that partner skill cat helper as you can see cat helper while in the team he helps carry supplies and increases the player's max carry capacity by 50. but every cat who's a part of my team will give me plus 50 carry weight so as a part of my party if i've got five cats i can have a 250 extra carry weight 
definitely worth it. A feed bot and some extra beds. Drop that down. And now we can upgrade our pal deck. One more level. Meaning we can have another little worker bee. Upgrade. An extra worker. Off you go. Oh my goodness. There's so many of them now. They outnumber me. If only they knew that they were stronger than me. They'll never know. Let's execute the next part of the plan. Build. Storage. And a wooden chest. Right next to where I'm going to be planting and dropping my wood. Right here. This means it's a minimum carry distance from this location where I'll be dropping them all the way over to this chest here. So my inventory right now has just got a bunch of resources. A little bit of wool, a little bit of ore, a little bit of blue rock. But I need wood to build foundations, right? So if I build those foundations and place them here, hang on a second. I'm able to build, but I don't have the resources for it. What's happening here? Well, that's the beauty of it. If it's in a chest nearby, it can auto build. So the only limitation we've got right now is a lack of wood. So let's start chopping. We need now to fill our inventory full of wood. 1,000 weights worth of wood. Total of 343 wood. That is going to be more than enough. Drop off the wood right here. All the other resources. And now it starts. Unlimited XP. Build foundations. Place them on the bottom. Right click. Right click. Level 17. Let's go. And look what's happening here. Can you see this little guy? He's picking up the wood and placing it right next to the chest, right near it. And as you can see here, the amount of wood that I'm dropping is significantly less because it's picking it up and instantly putting it back in over and over and over again. Now, if you get the placement of this just right and you collect the mouse cursor right on the top left here, you'll not accidentally select the wood pieces, meaning you will not be delayed and you'll be able to continuously place wood over, over, and over for an eternity. Because of our cats weren't working at the same time though, we actually have run out of wood here. We'll put that wood back in the chest and continue again. A little pro tip. So if you collect up all the stone that they're working on, all the extra bits, they won't have to carry those extra bits. So therefore they'll focus on carrying the wood for you. And look, now they're all on transporting duties and this is perfect. This is what we wanted. Put everything in the chest and then continue. Now they're all on transporting duties. They should come over and help us out. And there we go. Yes, they are. Oh, that's it. That's exactly what I wanted. Three of them are transporting now. And look at the number. So right now, we drop below 290. But as you can see, the number keeps hopping up and down. So that means the amount of XP we are generating is perpetual. We no longer need to pick up any other pieces of wood. We need to go one step beyond. This is not all we can do. What if you did the stone wall? Now, the stone wall does give a little bit more XP. A little bit more. But overall, if you're going to click a thousand times over, why not get the most amount of XP per click? So the wooden wall is great, but the stone wall is even better. We're not done yet. Let's activate our little friend, the auto clicker. So now I'm completely hands free. And the game is now generating XP for me. <laughs> Definitely. That's right. Put the resources back in the chest over and over again. Let me place this down over and over again. And look at the top left there. Look at that XP going up and up and up. And within about 10 minutes, you're going to be at level 30. How insane is that? Now, what's the point of level up in Power World? Well, one of the unlockables is at level 15. Allows you to have your first flyable mount. That means you can cover the entirety of the map in a short amount of time. Not only am I going to show you the first access to a flyable mount, but I'm going to show you the alpha version with the best possible stats, which gives extra speed and extra stamina. Twenty-nine world record level thirty, and there it is. Go on your friend's server and completely annoy them, and probably more than likely you'll probably crash the server because of so many items on the ground. So just be aware of that. There's more to this. We're not done yet. So put all of the cats that you've got, all of your worker bees, as your main party. Now these are all kind of low level, but you're level thirty, so you're gonna notice something here. They're gonna gain levels exceptionally quickly based on what your level is. So we click here and look on the left now, level up, level up, <laughs> leveling up over and over and over again until they all get to level 30 at your level. And this is giving them insane abilities, insane stats. And this is what you're gonna need to be able to take on a Nightwing to get your first flying mount. The amount of XP is insane. From level five, six, seven to straight across 25 and a 29 technology. Scroll down to level 15. And here it is right there. Unknown item. 
So you need to discover a Nightwing to be able to take advantage of the mount of it. So the first Nightwing location is not too far from where you are. It's roughly around this location just west of the starting area. However, the chance for it to spawn is quite low. You might get lucky, but from my experience, the odds aren't in your favor. However, if you zoom back and look at this starting location here, right on this beach, I'll drop a marker right there. That is a location of a guaranteed Nightwing location, but not a regular Nightwing. This is an alpha one, which is kind of a mini boss. Has insane stats, better stamina, and overall a better flying mount overall. So we need to get over here. But we need to be prepared. We need a bow. And we need to be able to shoot it to aggro it to get it to the ground so we can actually fight it. Another workbench, we'll drop that there. Then we'll manufacture a bow. Then we'll manufacture at least, ooh, it's going to be at least 50 arrows. Worker bees, working hard. Also, not only a bow, but we're also going to need a pick. And if you go to the bottom of the base, right on the left here is your first iron ore resource. If you look down there, there might be some down there as well. There's a random chance for them to spawn. We're going to need at least 30 iron ore, so get mining. That should be enough. You're going to need a little bit of wool as well. And the best way to get them is from these lambos at the start of the game. So just snipe a few with your bow, collect the wool, and you'll need that for later. We're also going to need a fire pal to do forging. So technology and get the primitive forge at level 10. Now we need some fire pals. And here they are. Once again, Fox Parks, just located around about here. You need to capture them all. We need a minimum of two. But you're going to have to take out a few more because you need some fire organs as well. As you can see, when you take them out, you give them fire organs, which are needed to build a forge. Well, my luck has come. A Nightwing right at the start of the game. This is the reason why you need the bow. So unlock this waypoint, take a shot at it, aggro it, throw out one of your pals, weaken it, throw it in a ball, and you should be good. Okay, Nightwing, you need to aggro it. That's why you need the bow. So take your first shot, and you might be able to damage it enough just by hitting it with your basic bow. However, you're not doing a lot of damage. Be aware, some of the attacks that Nightwing have got are actually quite powerful. So use control to dodge out the way of them when they're just about to throw their attack. You go the whirlwind, and they're going to zoom forward now. Another one, another one. Jump out of the way. Every time you get a headshot, you do, I believe, double damage. Now we've only got a single sphere, so be very careful when you throw it. It's only a 65% chance. Are we going to get it? Are we going to get lucky? Nice. The Nightwing. Now, I've captured one in this area. I got insanely lucky. So look around this spot in game if you want to get one pretty early. We're still going to show you the alpha version because that's a superior version anyway. Use the waypoint, go back to base. We need to make the saddle now. And that's why we've been collecting all these items. The saddle is really expensive. It's kind of a mid-game item. Hence the reason why having a flying mount is something they don't want you to rush towards. But I definitely want you to rush towards it. The game well and truly begins when you've got a flying mount. Drop the primitive forge. We'll drop one here and one here. The more forges you've got, the quicker you could do smelting. And we do need a little bit of iron. Also, the fox, which you can see on the left here, does kindling. And we need that to smelt the ore. So pop that into the base. Smelt half the ore in one of them. And then the other one, smelt the other half. If you've got two fire kindling pals, you'll be able to smelt the ore at record speed. Now, tab technology, level 15 the Nightwing saddle. Look how expensive it is. 20 leather, 10 cloth, 15 ingots. It's incredibly expensive. The cloth you can manufacture yourself. Cloth here, make it one of the workbenches. The leather you will get at the second waypoint around about here when you start hunting some deers. And another technology you're going to need is a PAL workbench at level 6. That is where you manufacture the saddle. There we go. The Nightwing saddle. Saddle for safely riding a Nightwing. This does take a while to build, so use all your pals to help you out. And there it is, the Nightwing saddle. That takes such a long time to craft, but it's so worth it. Deploy your Nightwing. Hold F. And there we go. A flying mount. And the world is now your oyster. My goodness. And the world is absolutely massive. Your potential is well and truly sky high. However... Do you want your Nightwing game to be taken to the next level and have an alpha Nightwing? Easy. On the map, navigate to the bottom of this island. Now, if you want to, you can fly all the way over there. That might take like three or four minutes of in-game time. However, if you were to despawn in that location, oh dear, respawn and then spawn in Icewind Island. And from here, what you could do is navigate to the boss area. Be aware, this is a bit of a challenge. 
even the level you're at right now it will put up a fight and you are going to need some pals that have range attacks to get to them let's not mess around let's make our way to that side of the island and luckily with the mount and a nightwing we can get over there a lot quicker you might be unlucky at this point you might not have a nightwing so you might be more limited of how you can get around the island but if you tiptoe all the way across the island around the coastline you'll reach the beach and just head to the east side of the beach and that's where the nightwing is the sad part is the spawn location for the island is on the exact opposite side so you need to transverse either through the entirety of the island or skim around the coastline this is the south side of the beach and you if you look straight up from this location you should be able to see the nightwing and then once again this is the reason why you need the bow because you need to be able to aggro him there we go it's been found okay i was a little bit off with the marker but i was pretty close the best way to win this fight is one to initially aggro them with the arrow use a ranged pal to do lots of damage in this case throwing fireballs oh my goodness that damage is so high i think we need a weaker pal for this otherwise we're going to knock him out really quickly get the health really low down recall the pal and then use a pal ball be aware the range attacks that nightwing has right now are incredibly deadly so you're gonna have to do loads of dodging to avoid the attacks it is so easy to die in this fight one more attack recall power ball dodge dodge 15 percent chance is so low so just keep throwing power balls if you've got the blue power ball you might have to throw at least 20 power balls before you get lucky enough so throw it then dodge throw dodge no another one dodge oh and we have a winner you are not just a nightwing mount you have not just achieved a simple nightwing you have a nightwing alpha and do the same again either respawn or find a fast travel point go back to your base pull it out the pile deck and enjoy the best mid game mount in the game and there it is the nightwing alpha switch it out look at this big boy he's a very big boy at the moment he's a little bit low level you can grind him just a little bit get him to level 30 where you are but overall welcome to the best mount in a mid game of power world unlimited xp perpetual xp at the base and the greatest mount in mid game power world thank you for the support for youtube members and patreon what game should i break next you have been given feedback goodbye